What's up guys, it is Carly bringing you episode number two of my entire DVD slash Blu-ray slash VHS horror movie collection. Um, yes, I had a day off here so I decided to go ahead and continue along with this. Uh, keep trying to like rearrange my setup here with the camera as you can see so that there's more lighting because I know the other one was kind of dark but anyway I'm just going to go ahead and get right into this so it's not like 10 hours long. Um, First up, we, uh, we're on the sea still here, and we have Carrie, the original part two, and the TV remake, uh, three pack here. I've had this for a long time. Um, yeah, uh, Carrie is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I think Sissy Spacek does the best at the rule just because she has, like, the perfect look to her. She has, like, those big, scary eyes. And then Carrie Part 2 I haven't seen in years. I used to watch it a lot when I was younger, but it's been a while. Um, You know, it's basically just another Carrie movie, but it's supposed to be, like, her sister, and I think her name is Rachel, so it's kind of dumb to, like, have, like, a Carrie sequel and call it Carrie Part 2 when it's about a girl with a totally different name, but, you know, that's all you really can do if you're going to make a sequel with a name in it. Um, and then, uh, finally, the Carrie remake for TV. I don't mind it. It's not too bad. It definitely is more faithful faithful to the book a little bit, which I don't really care for. I definitely prefer the original's ending, but, um, you know, they tried with the TV remake. It's not bad. Angela Bettis does a pretty good job. She's always doing a good job as playing an awkward person. So, yeah, Carrie movies. Next up, we have The Cat and Nine Tails. Um, this is a giallo, I believe, by Dario Argento. And um, I picked this up at, like, a cash and culture or something like that a while back because I wanted to see more Italian films. And I found this one to be, like, okay. It was kind of boring to me, honestly, personally. And I know I've heard other people say it's not really Argento's best film, so I definitely have to um, get more into his stuff because, you know, this isn't the best one, but it wasn't bad or anything. It just wasn't really for me. Then after that, we have Charlie's Farm. Um, once again, picked this up at like a cash and culture, and I thought it was pretty good. It's like a slasher movie where they go to this dude's farm, and he's, like, terrorizing them, picking them off. Um, I like the look of Charlie. He's very scary looking and, like, big and menacing. Um, you know, it wasn't anything, like, original or amazing, but I thought it was pretty fun and entertaining for what it was. Then after that, we have the Cherner... 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 This movie, um... <laughs> Whatever diaries, um, you know, this is about people who went to this location where there was a nuclear disaster. It's got like Jesse McCartney in it. McCarthy, I don't know, if, I don't know how you say his name, but um, he's in it. Oddly enough, this is from like the earlier 2000s, and it's okay. It's not really my favorite. I remember I watched it for the first time at a friend's house at a sleepover back in high school, and then um, I believe JP got me this copy, and I rewatched it. It's probably like a Six out of ten, you know, it's nothing great. Not probably not something I would really rewatch a lot, but I didn't think it was bad. It was okay. After that, we have Children of the Corn Part Two and Three: The Final Sacrifice and Urban Harvest. Um, you know, I absolutely love Part One. I actually don't own that. Like, I don't own all these movies at all, obviously. But um. I bought this just because I saw it somewhere and I was like, oh, I've never seen the sequel, so I might as well get started. And part two was a little bit too cheesy for me. I couldn't really get into it. I'd have to give it another watch. I know some people really like it for its like charm and things like that, but for me it was a little bit too cheesy. And then I actually really liked part three a lot better. Um, to be honest, I can't remember either of them all that well or like the general plots behind them, but I do know I liked part three quite a lot more. Um, I need to familiarize myself more with this franchise because I've only seen part one, two, three, and like Genesis in the remake. So I've seen like five of them, but there's like a million. After that, we have Child's Play 2. This is another franchise where I don't own them all, but I really need to get on that because I really, really enjoy this franchise. Um, and I've had this copy of Child's Play 2 forever, like the back it's pretty, it's all jumbled up right there. I don't know how that happened. Probably from moving around and stuff like that. 
all these years. But, um, yeah, Child's Play 2, I really enjoy it. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I remember when I was younger, though, I always liked this one better than the first one. Don't know if that would still be true today, but... Yeah, this is definitely one I'd have to rewatch again sooner or later because um, I really enjoy this movie and um, the franchise in general. After that, we have Seed of Chucky. This is another one that I've had forever. It's very, like, damaged right here. Um, but, you know, it's not that good of a movie, so it's not one that I would really probably get a better copy of. Um, yeah, I literally only own Part 1, 2, and then Seed of Chucky for some reason, but... Like I said, this is one I got when I was younger. When I was younger, I didn't think it was that bad. Um, it was definitely my least favorite in the franchise even back then. And, you know, it's not one that I would really rewatch at all now because it's pretty terrible. But, you know, what can you do? I do like Bride of Chucky still, but this one, um, it's just a no for me. Then we have a movie called Christina's House. Um... Picked this up at a pawn shop when I went to a drive-in, like, about an hour or so away from my house last, or this past, um, April, rather, and I picked it up because the cover was interesting to me. It was, um, this old, like, MGM cover, and I'd never heard of this movie or anything like that, so I thought it would be cool to check out, and oddly enough, when I watched it, I had actually seen, like, probably, like, maybe four minutes of it on TV one day when I was, like, flipping through the channels, and I actually remembered that, like, while watching this, that I remembered this just one specific scene, but I didn't, I must have just kept flipping and didn't actually watch the movie, so that's pretty cool. You know, it's a very cheesy, um, mystery movie. There's, like, um, sounds going on in this girl's house, I think, or something like that, and, um, just, all, it kind of reminds me of, like, it's trying to be, like, a Scream-type rip-off at times. I think this is from, like, the early 2000s, so, like, kind of around that Scream era. And the acting in it's not that great, honestly. There were, like, a couple... It was one where there was, like, a couple good actors and then a couple horrendous ones. So, you know, it's just, like, a cheesy slasher. Not really a slasher. I don't know what you would call this movie, but mysterious movie, I guess. Then we have Cloverfield. Um, I only watched this one once um, for the first time recently, actually. I checked it out because I wanted to, you know, see 10 Cloverfield Lane, so I figured I'd better pick this one up, even though they really don't have anything to do with each other. But, yeah, um, you know, found footage movie. It's pretty scary and effective, but it's definitely one that I feel like you can only watch once, and that could be enough, so... Might watch again one day, but not anytime soon. Then we have Cold Prey, another one that I just watched recently for the first time, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I really like these, like, snow settings where, like, it's like a slasher set in the snow, and um, I just like the winter settings, really, because um, you just feel, besides being in this horrible situation, it's also freezing outside, and that just sucks because you're uncomfortable and someone's trying to murder you, so I always enjoy that. Um, I really, really enjoyed Cool Prey, definitely one that I would go back to from time to time. Then we have Conjuring. Uh, I haven't watched this movie in quite a long time, but I really enjoy this. I think it's a very well done film. Um, saw it in theaters when it came out. It scared the crap out of me. Um, this is the one that me and my friends would always pop on and watch. We were always into like, in high school, like my one friend was into like ghost movies and things like haunted movies like this and Insidious. So this is one that kind of reminds me of high school. Um, definitely one that I will rewatch again and again. Um, very, it's pretty fantastic. Then we have Creepshow. Um, I think I ordered this, like, probably on, like, Second Spin or something like that. It's, like, in this old, you know, snapper case. Uh, this is another one that, yet again, I hadn't watched when I was younger, so I figured I had to watch it eventually. I still have not seen Part 2 or anything like that, and I still want to get my hands on that, but it's always too expensive when I see it. But anyway, yeah, Creepshow, I thought it was great. Um, I think it's, it's pretty long. I think it's... I don't know if it's two hours. It might be less than that. I can't really see the time on here. But um, it's one that flies by for how long it is. And I really like movies like that where they don't feel like they're dragging or anything. You know, obviously it's an anthology. So anthologies usually do tend to um, 
fly on by, but I think every segment in this is pretty solid. Definitely one that I have to give another rewatch, and I definitely have to pick up part two eventually because it's a crime that I have not seen that yet. Then we have Cube. Um, JP wanted me to check this out really bad, so he bought it for me for Christmas last year, I believe, and really enjoyed Cube. Um, it's that, like, contained horror type feel to it, um, and yeah, I really liked it. It's very well done. It's a 90s horror movie, too, so, you know, that says something because the 90s kind of sucked for horror, but this was definitely very well done for that time. Haven't seen any of the sequels here. They kind of suck, so yeah, but... Cube, definitely a masterpiece for its time. Then we have a movie I just reviewed on body bags as a fill-in, and that is Dark Harvest, the only shot on video film that I own. Once again, JP gave me this one because he ended up with two copies being sent to him, so he passed this on to me. And um, first time I watched it, I didn't mind it too much. It's basically like um, a bunch of... People are going on a trip, they get broken down, and um, scarecrows kind of attack them in the desert, and um, it's definitely not that good on the rewatch. Obviously, I had to rewatch it for the sake of that review, and it's very boring and kind of drags because there's a lot of character development that you don't really care about, and um, scarecrows don't look that good, but other than that, there's also a movie called Escapes on here with um, Vincent Price hosting it, of so or something like that, and I watched this one too, it's like an anthology, and it wasn't too bad, I can't really remember the stories in it too good, but I remember being pretty surprised with it, because I thought it might suck or something, but it actually wasn't bad, some of them were actually kind of creepy. After that, we have another Scarecrow movie, and that is Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. This is a TV movie from the 70s. Um, pretty good stuff for a TV movie. I think it's very well done. Um, definitely one that I will rewatch. It's a good Halloween-type movie. I reviewed it on my 31 Days of Horror, and yeah, it's definitely one I would go back to around Halloween time, because there is a Halloween party going on in it, and then Scarecrows, those always make me think of that time of the year. After that, we have Dead Girl. This is a movie that I was really looking forward to seeing because it seemed like something that would be right up my alley, and I actually didn't care for it too much. Um, I thought just the characters kind of just got on my nerves, like the two guy characters, and I don't know, just I, it was just really disappointing to me. I know a lot of people love this movie, though, but for me, I feel like it was maybe hyped up or I thought it was going to be something that it wasn't, so yeah, not a big fan. Then we have Devil. Um, actually, one of my friends who's not really into horror at all asked, told me I should check this out, and that made me really curious to watch it. Um, and yeah, it's definitely a very well done movie. It's produced by M. Night Shyamalan. It's not directed by him, but yeah, very good movie about people trapped in an elevator, and one of them is The Devil. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. I think I gave it like an 8 out of 10. After that, we have a piece of shit called Eaters. Um, I was, one day I was just searching online for random movies, and I didn't really know what I wanted. I just wanted to buy some more movies for my collection, so I was just picking stuff based on the cover, basically. I wasn't really even reading into them too much, and this was one of them, a product of my decision. Um, I thought this cover just looked kind of cool. I like that, like, mask and things like that. Um, this case is really flimsy, like... It's just very, very, like, feels like it could just rip in half, and the movie was atrocious. The acting was the worst I've ever seen, I think, um, at this point, really. But the story, in general, I feel like could have been really well done, but the acting was just terrible and laughable. So, yeah, maybe if it had good acting, it would have been much better. I think it would, honestly, because the story was kind of all right. But, yeah, that's what you get for a blind buying. Then we have Electric Boogaloo, I think that's how you say that, um, the untold story of Canon Films, and JP gave me this one as well for, like, my birthday or something like that, um, and the reason is because there are, it's just about, like, Canon Films, really, and they talk a little bit about, like, TCM Part 2 and things like that, um, it's pretty interesting, it's just a documentary on films, uh, you know, not really a horror movie, but it does, like, talk about Texas Chainsaw Part 2 because that was one of these films, and 
stuff like that. It was interesting. I haven't really seen many of the films in this, though, so, like, you know, I couldn't, like, really get all that into it, but at the same time, I always find interest in seeing stuff like this. And then, finally, for this part, guys, we have The Entity with Barbara Hershey. Uh, pretty long movie, pretty good movie, though. It's got an awesome soundtrack. Um, definitely one that I probably don't like as much as other people. Um, I really enjoyed it, but at the same time, it's not one that I would really go back to or anything like that, but I, it was very well made and had a very creepy vibe to it, and, you know, what's happening in it is pretty horrifying. This is actually, oddly enough, one that my mom enjoys, and she's not really into horror. She actually told me, I, I had bought this, and she told me, like, oh, I should definitely watch this right away, and, you know, I liked it. It's just I didn't like it as much as other people, I don't think, but yeah, that'll be it for this part, guys. Thank you for sticking around and joining me, and I'll see you in part three.